first. Good morning and welcome to St. Mark. We're so glad to have you all gathered here in person and over Facebook Live um, and YouTube later. Uh, today we gather on the fifth Sunday in Lent to study the way of love. Our practice this week that we're focusing on is rest. How we are called to rest in God so that we might be transformed by God. Today in worship, we welcome organist Carol Olmsted. Uh, we're thankful for your gift of music here with us, and uh, we're thankful that Tim gets a little bit of time off. We'll welcome him back next week. Friends, if you would like to sponsor a flower in memory of or honor of someone for our Easter garden, today is the day that those orders are due. There are um, flyers in the back that you may uh, pick up or fill out actually today uh, so that we can have a beautiful Easter garden uh, for that celebration of Easter. We gather this Wednesday at 7 p.m. for our Way of Love conversations. We'll hope you'll, we hope you'll join us uh, over Zoom uh, to delve into this topic of rest and how we might practice rest in our lives. With those announcements, we'll prepare our hearts for worship by listening to the prelude.
Please stand as you are able for the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the source of steadfast love. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion with a quiet moment of confession. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy over us. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, to the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven. And God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus, the way of love. Amen. You may be seated for our opening song. the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This morning, as we reflect on God's word, we are wondering a few things. We're wondering, are there places in your body that are ready to wake up? Are there places in your body that are ready to rest? And then, are there parts of your life that are ready to wake up? Are there parts of your life that are ready to rest? And then one of our favorite questions, are there any seeds in your life that are ready to pop and sprout and grow, and maybe even bear some fruit? So friends, as we hear God's word, we think of those things today. We notice in our bodies where those might be or where in our life those things might be. And we begin by praying the prayer of the day. O 
O God, with steadfast love, you draw us to yourself. And in mercy, you receive our prayers. Strengthen us to bring forth the fruits of the Spirit, that through life and death, we may live in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now, our special children's reflection in Lent. Young friends, it's so good to see you all today. We think about moments in Jesus' life that help us journey toward Easter and toward the special events of Holy Week. And we remember Jesus' life began with Mary and Joseph in that little stable when he was born. We remember him to be that wordless baby, that wordless baby who was the word of God. And we remember how he grew up and became a man and was baptized in the Jordan River and the clouds and the heavens being torn open when he was baptized and God's voice coming over him and the, the people hearing God say, this is my son, my beloved. And we remember how Jesus was driven into the wilderness after that to find out who he really was. And we remember that Jesus learned that he was one who was, was really somebody who was supposed to come near other people, especially other people who other people didn't want to come near. And Jesus learned that he would be raised up and he would be someone who was lifted. But in that lifting, he would come near to everyone. And we know that Jesus was a teacher. And so this week we hear a moment when Jesus was teaching. But in his way, Jesus told the people, I'm like a, a grain of wheat who goes into the ground to die. And like he would do, Jesus would say these things. And the disciples sometimes would shake their heads and have no idea what Jesus was saying. And so that may be you today. But we also, like the disciples, carry these things with us. And we know that Jesus' life will help us understand these parables that Jesus gave us. And so we listen for those moments of rest and of waking up, of seeds going into the ground, and of new life sprouting. And so, my friends, our service continues with the first reading. First reading from Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 31 to 34. These days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors. When I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt and the covenant that they broke. Though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. For those days, says the Lord, I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another, or say to each other, Know the Lord. For they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to John. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They said to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and they said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. 
Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it. And those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord. about to see the results of rest. In the dark quiet of the ground, beneath mounds of snow, and there were mounds this year, the seeds have been resting. The bulbs taking a good long winter's nap. The roots lying fallow, waiting. After all that rest, they are beginning to awaken to enliven, to send up their shoots bright green against the dark earth, some already showing forth their glory in the first flowers of spring. We are about to see the results of rest. We are about to feel the results of rest. For this past year, many things in our lives have lain dormant, put to sleep to keep ourselves and our loved ones and all of our neighbors safe and healthy. And as vaccines are given and numbers of those infected go down, we're beginning to feel the results of that rest. We're beginning to experience the joy anew of things we previously took for granted like worshiping in person or meeting for a cup of coffee or hugging a family member, living without constant fear. For some, these things remain on the horizon, and for others, the green shoots of them have started to come up. We are about to feel the results of rest. Today we turn our attention to this practice of rest on our way of love journey. On the seventh day of creation, God rested. God stopped working and enjoyed all that God had created. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy, we hear in the Ten Commandments. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest, Jesus says. 
we are in this season of Lent, preparing to witness the grain of wheat that is God with us, Jesus Christ, fall into the earth, to die on a cross and be laid in a tomb, and then emerge, bearing the fruit of resurrection for us all. We are today acknowledging that we too are seeds, grain who must rest, so that we can re-emerge transformed and bear the fruit that we are called to bear in our daily lives. But resting is not highly valued in our culture, is it? So often we forget about it. In fact, it was almost left out of these seven practices we're practicing in the way of love. To put these practices together, a group of faith leaders met for a weekend of intense work, considering what it means to live life as a Christian. And they came away with six practices. And they presented them to Bishop Michael Curry of the Episcopal Church from which this series of way of love originated. And the bishop looked them over and he said, these are great, but you forgot rest. We too forget about rest. Or we fight it like a toddler fights going down for a nap. We devalue it. We ignore our need for it. But friends, rest is essential for transformation. I'm reading a good book called Wintering, The Power of Rest and Retreat in Difficult Times by Catherine May. And she says it like this. Doing these deeply unfashionable things, slowing down, letting your spare time expand, getting enough sleep, resting, is a radical act now, but it is essential. Friends, plants and animals don't fight rest. They don't fight the times of winter, of being still. They give in to this rest, vanishing from sight. They give in and they depend on scant resources so that transformation can occur. For rest is part of transformation. A seed going into the ground must die so that it can become a plant. A grain of wheat looks so very different from a grown wheat plant. So very different even from a seedling that emerges from the ground. In order for that amazing transformation to happen, rest must come first. None of that transformation is possible without rest. So to rest is an integral part of the Christian life. One that God desires for us each day, each week, so that we can rest from our labors and let God do God's work of transformation within us. We are called to be like those grains, to trust the way of the seed, to let ourselves fall into the earth and let God do God's work on our hearts in those secret places when we're removed from the light of day and the hustle of daily life so that God can work transformation and then draw us back into the world where we might bear the fruit God calls us to. Friends, we are called to rest. How might you practice intentionally this practice of rest this week? To get us started, I invite you to take a moment of rest in this very moment. Go ahead and close your eyes if you feel comfortable. And take a deep breath. And then I invite you to rest in these words by Jan Richardson in her poem, Blessing the Seed. I should tell you at the outset... This blessing will require you to do some work. First, you must simply let this blessing fall from your hand. As if it were a small thing, you could easily let slip through your fingers. 
as if it were not most precious to you, as if your life did not depend on it. Next, you must trust that this blessing knows where it is going, that it understands the ways of the dark, that it is wise to seasons and to times. Then, and I know this blessing has already asked much of you, it is to be hoped that you will rest and learn something is at work when all seems still, seems dormant, seems dead. I promise you this blessing has not abandoned you. I promise you this blessing is on its way back to you. I promise you when you are least expecting it, when you have given up your last hope, this blessing will rise, green and whole and new. Amen. Now, having heard the word of God preached and proclaimed and getting the chance to do that ourselves, we pray with the church throughout the world. And we join them in prayer. And we join them in commemorating the International Day for an end to racial discrimination happening throughout the world today. And we pray for all those who are grieving, whose lives have been marred by violence, especially in Atlanta. And we let these prayers encourage our silent prayers. Let us pray for the church throughout the world. And let us pray for our congregation. Let us pray for everyone who is preparing for baptism during the season of Easter. Let us pray for the health of all plants and animals. Let us pray for all who care for the earth. Let us pray for an increase of justice in our land. Let us pray for a spirit of concord throughout our society. Let us pray for an end to racism and systemic injustice. Let us pray for the victims of gun violence.
just pray for the Asian American and Asian descent community experiencing unprecedented instances of violence and hate. Let us pray for the hungry, the homeless, the underemployed, and the unemployed. Let us pray for the end of the pandemic. Let us pray for all who are sick or suffering. Let us pray for all who will die today. Let us pray for the desires of our hearts. Let us pray for the work of the Spirit of God. And let us give thanks for all who have gone before us in the faith. Into your hands, merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Friends, the peace of Christ be with you all. And I invite you to safely share a sign of that peace with those uh, in your bubble and uh, who you may see in the sanctuary. Peace, friends. At this time, we prepare for communion. So you should have received a cup with a wafer at the bottom and, a, and wine or grape juice at the top. Uh, friends at home, if you'd like to get your crackers or your bread, your juice or your wine ready, we will partake in Holy Communion. I will say the words of institution. We'll hear the Lord's Prayer sung. And after that, I'll say, taste and see that the Lord is good. And then we'll open our packets together and partake. The cantor will say those words of uh, conversation we usually say together at the beginning. Uh, so say them in your hearts as the cantor speaks them for us. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for remembrance of me. We meditate on the words of the Lord's Prayer as they are sung for us.
Taste and see that the Lord is good. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. God of steadfast love, send us in your way of love that our lives bear witness to the love that has made us new in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Friends, at this time, the congregation is invited to be seated, and the Council for 2021 2022 is welcome to stay standing as we install our Council. The following people have been elected by the congregation to positions of leadership as they serve on the church council. Bob Algar, Millie Cady, Andy Goodrich, Judy Fell, Henriette Huckporty, Laura Kramer Jacobowski, Kevin Lang, Diane Looper, Dave Ocon, Abby Sorum, Sue Supergan, Doug Trisais, and Julie Wenzel. We give thanks for their willingness to serve. In baptism, we are welcomed into the body of Christ and sent to share in the mission of God. We rejoice now that these sisters and brothers will lead us in our common life and our mutual mission as a congregation. A reading from 1 Corinthians. There are a variety of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them to everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. You have been elected to positions of leadership and trust in this congregation. You are to see that the words and deeds of this household of faith Bear witness to God, who gathers us into one together with the whole church. You are to seek to involve all members of this congregation in worship, learning, witness, service, and support, so that the mission of Christ is carried out in this congregation, in the wider church, in this community, and in the whole world. You are to be faithful to your specific area of serving that the spirit who empowers you may be glorified. You are to be examples of faith active in love, fostering peace, harmony, and mutual understanding in this congregation. On behalf of your sisters and brothers in Christ, I ask you, will you accept and faithfully carry out the duties of the offices to which you have been elected? If so, say quietly, I will, and I ask God to help me. People of God, I ask you, will you support these, your elected leaders, and will you share in their mutual ministry that Christ has given to all who are baptized? If so, say quietly, we will and we ask God to help us. We will and we ask God to help us. I now declare you installed as council members of this congregation. Almighty God, bless you and direct your days and deeds in peace that you may be faithful servants of Christ. Amen. And you, the whole people of God, God bless you, that you may be a blessing. In the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity, amen. Go in peace. Rest in God's love. Thanks be to God.